George wanted me to show you how to troubleshoot a power tilt and trim pump on a Yamaha outboard. I guess George isn't going to introduce this. What we have here is a Yamaha F90 TLR. Now, basically, all Yamahas use a similar system, and really every outboard uses a very similar system for the power tilt trim. Um, there's a little electric motor that runs a pump, it's all an integrated unit, and uh, it runs a little cylinder up and down that tilts the motor. Now, this one in particular isn't working. So, we're going to show you how to diagnose what's wrong with your outboard's power tilt and trim. So the first step to diagnosing your power trim is what does it do? In this one's case, when you push the button, you hear a very loud click, which tells us that the fuse up here is okay. So obviously you'd look for a fuse first. Um, the solenoids are clicking, but the motor is not running. So to determine if the solenoids or relays that control this are good, we're gonna need a multimeter. Now, I'll bring the camera over here and show you. On this particular Yamaha, the solenoids and the fuse are all inside this little fuse cover. There's three little plastic tabs you have to push and pull it off for access to that. Once you gain access to that, I'll show you better pictures and videos, but down here is a relay block that has the power tilt and trim motor control. So let me get the camera over here so I can show you what we're going to be testing. Right here is where this power tilt and trim gets its power from. You can chase the wires from the motor up through the cowl and see that this green wire and this blue wire are our motor wires. They have these little rubber caps over them. So what we're gonna do is put the multimeter on these two posts where the wires are connected and then we're going to hit the switch so that we can hear or so that we can see on the multimeter if we're getting voltage through the fuse, through the solenoids, to the motor. Then that will tell us if the problem is inside of this electrical area or if it's the motor itself that's bad. So I'm going to take and connect one pin to here, the other pin to there. I'm going to flip the switch. As you can see, we've got 12 volt. And in the other direction, we have 12 volt the other direction. I'm not sure which one was negative, which one was positive, because what it does is reverses the polarity to control up or down by running the motor in the opposite direction. So we know electrically everything is working here. So Pretty much it's the motor. I mean, it could be these wires in between here in the motor, but they're an integral part of the motor body, so splicing or replacing them isn't really a great option. So we're going to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts here that hold our wires onto the solenoids, chase our old wire out, chase the new wire in for a new motor. What we're going to do is remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this blue and green wires on and chase them out through the cowl so that we can chase the new motor wires in. Now that we've chased our blue and green wires out, we need to lift the outboard up so that we can access this tilt and trim motor. Now with a non-functional tilt and trim motor, it's not as easy as pushing a button to trim the motor up. That's probably why you're watching this video. Uh, down here on the transom bracket, there is generally speaking always a hole with a screw of some kind. On this, it's a flathead screw. There's a little indicator up here that tells you turn this counterclockwise and you can lift the motor. So turn that counterclockwise, get a friend, chain hoist, forklift, something, 
because you're going to be lifting the entire weight of your outboard motor up and then you need to flip down the little safety catch up here because when you remove this motor you're opening the hydraulic system so if you just lift it up and tighten this back up in theory it should hold but in practice it may not and let's face it I don't want any of you to lose fingers or things like that so use your safety catch flip that down make sure it sets on that and then carry on with the rest of the process so let's get over here now and see what we need to do to pull this motor out and replace it and get the new one hooked up. This is the power tilt and trim motor. It has hydraulic pump down here, cylinder here. So we need to remove this assembly, which on this model includes this second little plate. So we're gonna be loosening these four five millimeter hex bolts. Now we'll break this loose. It has just a little O-ring seal. Pop that up out. If you compare our old motor to our new motor, you may notice that there is just a little bit of difference here, but that's okay. And let me show you why. The old motor uses this big long plastic coupler that sits on top of here like that. And our new motor comes with a little baggie and this little itty bitty short coupler. So that makes it more universal because Yamaha switched to the longer shaft motor and the shorter coupler later on. So this is upgrading the old long coupler style to the newer short coupler style. Let's get our O-ring and short coupler installed in there and then put this motor on and uh, get it wired up so that we've got tilt and trim again. Okay, so our little coupler needs to go down here in this fluid and get keyed onto the shaft. have it. We're going to line up approximately how this is going to go, which is like this, and we need to turn this motor to where this shaft is going to line up with our coupler down in there. And I do believe that is it. So we will get our four bolts and snug them back down in. The back ones, of course, are a challenge, but it is doable. A little tip for getting bolts into hard spots, take a piece of rag and force it on like that, so then you can hold your bolt. Then you can just snake it right down in where it's meant to go. So our new motor is installed down there. Wire is run up and reconnected blue wire on the top, green wire on the bottom. So now it's the moment of truth. Does the tilt and trim work now? It's a different sound. Let's flip our safety up because it lifted it up off the safety stop and down we go. There we have it. So in this video, you've learned how to find the fuse, check the fuse, check power at your solenoids or relays. And because we're getting power to the solenoids and relays, we know the fuse is good. We know that the solenoids and relays are working. 
and the motor was to blame. So with a replacement motor, this boat will be back uh, trimming, tilting, and uh, doing all those hydraulic things that they do. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.